My mother raised me to think that you had an obligation to make a better world if you could see it. With a really strong sense of service, that you know the world needed changing and if you could see a way to do it, you should be doing it. My name's Genevieve Bell and I'm an anthropologist. I work at Intel. I drive one of Intel's research and development labs and my job is to reinvent the way we experience computing. No small task. The logic of anthropology was the logic of my life. I mean, it's what I've always done. It's I've always been in places that weren't necessarily the places I was from. My mother's an anthropologist and I grew up on her field sites in central and northern Australia in the 1970s and 1980s. And we ended up 300, 400 kilometers north of Alice Springs in this tiny Aboriginal settlement. And my mother was asking this little girl, who's in charge of you? And this little girl looked at my mother and dug her feet into the ground and said, I've been boss for myself. And I remember thinking, oh my God, what an answer is that? And what that is to aspire to, to be your own fully independent, self-determining human being. And she was tiny, right? She was like my size. And I remember just going, okay, I want that. I want to be boss for myself. I ended up at Intel in the kind of way that only Australians <laughs> really can end up somewhere. I met a man in a bar in Palo Alto in 1998. I was teaching at Stanford and he asked me what an anthropologist was and I told him and then he said, what are you going to do with that? And I told him I was teaching and he said, but you could do more. And that was an extraordinary invitation. It was an extraordinary moment to kind of think, what does more look like? What would that be? If you could change the companies that made the building blocks of all of that, you could change the foundational companies, you could change the way they thought about what they were doing, their imagination of the project they were embarked upon, you could change everything. What a totally fabulous opportunity, right? And as the weeks turned into months, I discovered a couple of things about Intel. One was that I would go to meetings and I'd be the only woman. I couldn't pretend I wasn't female because I clearly was. And there was no point pretending that I wasn't. And as soon as I opened my mouth, it was really clear I was not an engineer. <laughs> so I think I learned to start imagining those things were an advantage. I'm going to be the only woman in the room and I'm going to be the only social scientist. What I say has to count. It's got to mean something, it's got to deliver something. I'm not going to waste it, right? If I've got an extra five seconds of someone's attention, I'm going to take it and run with it. It's really been about trying to make something better and different. And you know, somewhere along the way, you actually start to be successful. The day I knew that we were making a difference, the CEO of the company, Paul Ottolini, stood up and said, the future of computing is experiences. That is an extraordinary thing to hear out of the mouth of the CEO of a technology company. Technology is only as good as what it will do for people. Experiences there are the things that are going to matter to us. It's how we connect to our friends and our family, how we entertain ourselves and others, how we manage our lives, how we conduct our day-to-day -day activities. Experiences is all of that. What do I hope my legacy is? God, that's such a cheeky question. Yeah. <sighs> I want to believe I changed the world. And more importantly, that I made it possible for a whole lot of other people to do that too. Because it shouldn't just be about you, right? It should be about making the space for a whole lot of others.